Hey guys, I've got something new, fresh, and quite of an innovative keyboard in my hands right now. It came all the way from China by Tommy Z, the designer and creator of Core Keys Keyboard. Okay, wait, what is this keyboard you ask? Well, thanks to him, he sent out his prototype 60% keyboard that is currently in group buy called the Z60 Evolve. Oh, and I'm also excited to tell you that this will be my first giveaway for this new Z60 keyboard. Woohoo! So stay tuned after this intro to know more about the rules and how to enter the giveaway. It is a group buy item, meaning it's not in sales, but it's a custom made keyboard pre-order that requires some time to be manufactured and be delivered to you. I urge you to go check out his website, corkeys.com and GeekHack, showcasing his amazing custom mechanical keyboard designs that he put a lot of thought into. It's available in three colorways, black, e-white, red, and beautiful navy blue. Anyways, this keyboard is called the Z60 Evolve by Quarkies. Thanks to him, I get to build and guide you to potentially building your own Z60 in the future. Mm -hmm. I mean, who knows? Maybe you might just want to get one after watching me build this. <laughs> okay, well, you're probably wondering, wait, what, what's so special about this keyboard? Mm -hmm. Well, this keyboard can have multiple layouts within one. Yep, interesting. Basically, it uses a split top mounting mechanism where it uses two brass press bar instead of an entire top enclosure. Now, these press bars are where you can attach these tiny blockers to split out the key layout and have it suit to whatever default layout you prefer. The Z60 can be adjusted to either the 60% layout WKL or the classic HHKB layout all by just adjusting the blockers on the keyboard. Cool, right? Not only that, you can go for the ISO or ANSI with the layout. Plus, it's a gasket mount which will make it even better in terms of sound quality and typing feeling. Who doesn't love a gasket mount, right? Okay, I guess you get the gist of it by now, so let's see what's inside and build this thing, shall we? The case. Oh my god, look at it. It's so cool. First things first, before we start soldering, step 1. Grease the switches and stabilizers. The kit does not come with switches and stabs, so you might need to prepare your own. I'm using the Duroc L7 linear switches and screw-in stabs. It may take up a few hours to do this, but it really changes up the feel, sound and durability of the switch. If your switches are already smooth and doesn't require lubing, you can skip this part. Step 2. 
2. Attach the stabs to the PCB Always, always remember to put on the stabs before you start soldering. If you're planning to use screw-in stabs instead of the clip-in ones, make sure the PCB has holes that support the screw-in stabs. Just put on the plastic washer first and screw it on. This is the perfect time to tune your stabs or do some modification to make it sound even better. Step 3 is to arrange the plate, foam and switches together. Take the PCB that has the stabs attached and arrange the foam first, then add the plate on top. Uh, it's been raining here all day. I love it. Uh, okay, anyways, before we start soldering, let's add the switches. It's absolutely important to make sure the metal pins are straight before adding it on the PCB so that the pins will go through the hole to kind of ease the soldering process later. Okay, we're almost there. Step 4 is soldering time. This has to be my favorite part of building a keyboard. It's just oh, so satisfying to make a really good solder joint. Just really, really be careful with a hot soldering iron. I recommend you to invest in a good one and proper solder so it'll be easier for beginners that want to try soldering. After soldering, we can now prep the beautiful red Quarkies case and take the USB-C daughter board that will be later connected to the PCB right through that small indentation inside the case, making sure the USB port is aligned well and screwed on tightly. Next step is to apply the poron sticker to the edges of the case where there is a small hollow structure perfectly fitted for the cushioning of the sticker. Now the poron is what makes the gasket mount feel luxuriously softer at bottoming out and has a stable key feel. We'll also be using 4 more strips attached to the press bar. Okay, so I decided to go for the HHKB layout. Thus, I'll be using these bigger brass blockers to complete the layout. To attach them to the press bar is easy. Just align them against the holes and screw it on. Make sure the ones with the bigger hole is facing outwards. Next up is to add the foam and attach the cable to the PCB. Adding foam will help a lot to dampen the pinginess of the aluminum case. Attach the cable that we put on earlier to the little socket until it's tightly connected. Then slide in the PCB and attach the press bar. If you choose to solder, make sure you leave off the switches at the edges here for the blockers. To attach the press bar, you will need some screws to screw it on. Very little allen key might help. Okay, now we can finally add the foot pads to the back. Of course, the final part, definitely a must, adding the keycaps. I borrowed these lovely grey, red Akko keycaps from my friend. I think it's stunning and the color would go well with the case. I genuinely think that Akko stuff uh, just has the best packaging, plus it's affordable. I would say it feels slightly coarse in texture as they are made of PVT plastic. It's in cherry profile and there's a total of 157 keys in the set. So there's a lot to go around. Cool. 
Ta-da! Wow, I finally finished building the Z60 Evolve. Gosh, it did take me some time, but I'm excited to use it and hear what it sounds like. Yay, all right, I finally finished the Z60 Evolve build. For a very fancy custom build, this is perfect for any keyboard enthusiast who loves the 60% layout yet still want to have options for possible layout changes. By the way, this is a prototype and the real product will have a slightly darker red than this. I mean, gosh, if this was a clothing item, it would be a statement piece for sure. The brass accents, blockers, and aluminum case really is what makes a huge difference to other cheaper keyboards out there. I like the idea of the Z60 being customizable in terms of layout choice, that it can evolve the layout to whatever you want, hence the name. If you choose to go for the hot swappable PCB, it's more forgiving and optionable. But if you go for the solder only PCB like mine, you're gonna get stuck with one layout. I mean, unless you don't mind desoldering switches. If you are new to building a keyboard, don't worry, it's quite easy. Plus it comes with a manual. So if I can build it, so can you. The PCB is QMK and VIA driven, which is great because it's a lot more intuitive and maintainable than your average software you get from other branded keyboards. Comparing to other mounts I've had recently built, gasket mounts just have to be one of the best sounding ones I've had so far. It feels a lot more cushiony, firmer, and stable. I have nothing bad to say about the Z60 other than the price can be expensive for someone who's just looking to buy a regular keyboard. But hey, the Z60's quality and uniqueness of this keyboard definitely shows that the creator spent a lot of time and care designing it. But what if I tell you you can get it for free? Great news guys, the Z60 keyboard is up for a giveaway. As a thank you to my viewers, I'm giving away the new Z60 Evolve by Quarkies. I mean, you don't want to miss this, right? Come on. Plus, it's easy. All you need to do is subscribe to my YouTube channel, comment down below what your dream keyboard is, follow Quarkies' Instagram and Discord channel, follow my Instagram account at OneShazLina. I will randomly pick the winner of the giveaway after a month or so, so stay tuned. I'm just gonna go enjoy my keyboard now. <laughs> Bye guys.